Hey everyone, so in this video, I'm going to be providing a sample response to a paper one part B question about price elasticity of demand. Um, so again, uh, this is a perk available to the members of my channel. Uh, and this video is a way to sort of entice you to join so you can see the exclusive content that is available to the members of my channel. So let's start with the essay. So the question is, using real-world examples, discuss and evaluate the usefulness of knowledge of price elasticity of demand for government decision-making. So what this means is basically how useful is it to the government and their decision-making process to know the price elasticity of demand? Um, the writing time for a paper one part B should be about 45 minutes. You should aim to answer this question in 45 minutes. So what do you do? Well, first of all, you start by defining key terms. It's not really part of the assessment criteria to define key terms. You actually get assessed on how well you use the key terms and whether you're using them appropriately or not. But I think it's important to define at least one or two just to kind of signal to the examiner, hey, I know what this means, okay? So... In order to address the demands of this question, a few key terms need to be defined. Price elasticity of demand is defined as the responsiveness of quantity demanded to changes in price. Indirect taxes are defined as taxes on expenditure on goods and services, as opposed to taxes on income or wealth, which are direct taxes. And then I believe you should just draw your diagram because that makes the next part of the essay much easier. Draw the diagram. Um, and then you can refer to it as you are explaining and analyzing. So I drew the diagram. I picked a real world example about cigarettes. So price of cigarettes, quantity in packs. I have a very inelastic demand curve because cigarettes tend to be addictive and habit forming. And then I have a supply curve shifting upwards due to the imposition of an indirect tax. I labeled it figure one. This makes it easier to refer back to the diagram in the essay. So as illustrated in figure one above, an indirect tax imposed by the government on cigarettes will have the effect of increasing the costs of production for tobacco companies. And so we'll shift the supply curve to the left from S to S1. What I'm doing here is I'm incorporating the labels in the diagram in the body of my essay, which is how you explain the diagram. This will decrease the equilibrium quantity from Q1 to Q2 and will raise the equilibrium price from P1 to be P2. However, due to their addictive and habit-forming nature, cigarettes generally tend to have highly inelastic demand, meaning quantity demanded is not very responsive to changes in price. Therefore, the decrease in quantity from Q1 to Q2 will be less than proportionate to the rise in price from P1 to P2, meaning the percentage change in quantity will be less than the percentage change in price. So I've explained my diagram, all right? This is basically the explanation of the diagram. Have I really answered the question? If you'll remember, the question is how useful PED is to government decision-making. I haven't yet answered the question. This is the next part here. So this is how knowledge of PED can be useful for government decision-making. It makes more sense for governments to tax products with inelastic demand, since the fall in quantity will be less than proportionate to the rise in price, and thus, guaranteeing tax revenue for the government without disrupting the industry too much and causing mass unemployment in that industry. If the product has inelastic demand, businesses are more likely to pass the burden of the tax on to consumers in the form of higher prices. Okay, so now I've answered the question somewhat. Well, not fully, actually, because I haven't discussed yet. I haven't evaluated, but I've explained key theory, defined key terms, drew my diagram and explained it. Now I need to start my evaluation and my real world example, which is why I start with however. In the real world, this can be a lot more complicated. For example, in 2021, the Biden administration proposed taxing e-cigarettes or vapes at the same federal tax rate as regular cigarettes, which is about 1.01 .01 per pack. I got this from an article, by the way, um, that I'm using for my real world example. Vapes and e-cigarettes have been largely untaxed so far as they are relatively new products to the market. This vaping tax worried a lot of economists and health experts because it is not accompanied by a rise in the federal tax rate on regular cigarettes and thus eliminated the price differential between e-cigarettes and regular cigarettes, which could sway many smokers to revert back to regular cigarettes since, since vapes will no longer be a cheaper substitute. 
While both forms of smoking are harmful, there is consensus that vapes are somewhat less harmful and that vapes can help regular smokers quit cigarette smoking. An advantage of the policy is that the vaping tax is very likely to sway a lot of tweens, not tweens, teens, <laughs> a lot of teens and youth to stop vaping as these stakeholders tend to be more social smokers and haven't been smoking for a long time, which means their demand is likely to be more elastic, more responsive to the change in price. However, for habitual smokers or smokers attempting to quit regular smoking, their demand for vapes is likely to be more elastic than their demand for regular cigarettes. Thus, the demand for vapes will be very responsive to the rise in price caused by the tax. If the price differential between the two substitutes, e-cigarettes and regular cigarettes, is eliminated, then many regular cigarettes, sorry, regular smokers may stick with regular cigarettes or revert back to them if they're trying if they've tried vaping for a while as a strategy to quit smoking. And this is a major disadvantage of the policy affecting this group of stakeholders. It's also important to remember that no matter how inelastic demand is in the short run, it becomes more elastic in the long run as consumers search for cheaper substitutes and the advantage vapes had over regular cigarettes is that they were cheaper, but now the, that advantage will disappear with the imposition of the tax. In response to these concerns raised by economists and health experts, the Biden administration emphasized that a higher tax on regular cigarettes would be regressive and would fall harder on the lower income households, a group of stakeholders for which Biden promised not to raise taxes on. So here what I've done is I've evaluated and I've discussed I've talked about the pros and cons, short-term, long-term benefits, the advantages, disadvantages I've really discussed. However, my essay is not complete without a conclusion paragraph. To conclude, while knowledge of price elasticity of demand may help governments with making decisions regarding which products to tax, there are limitations to relying solely on PED to make those decisions. And PED itself differs from one stakeholder to another and can change over time. In the long run, demand becomes more elastic anyway as consumers search for cheaper substitutes. Therefore, knowledge of PED is, use, is only useful to a limited extent and many other factors have to be taken into consideration. And by doing this, I've concluded, I've wrapped up my main arguments and I've made sure I've addressed the demands of the question. Here's just a quick screenshot of the um, assessment criteria. So. This essay, not to like brag or anything, but I know because I'm an examiner, would score in the highest mark band between the 13 to the 15 range. Now, depending on the examiner, some might give me a 13, some might give me a 14. I don't know if I'll get a 15, but still, it's still in the highest mark band. So, are the specific demands of the question understood and addressed? Yes, ma'am. Relevant theories fully explained? Yes, sir. Relevant economic terms are used appropriately throughout the response? Definitely. Where appropriate, relevant and diagrams are included and fully explained. I have included a diagram and I have fully explained it. The response contains evidence of effective and balanced synthesis or evaluation. You'll, not you'll notice that my evaluation is balanced. I didn't just talk about the advantages. I also mentioned the disadvantages. I didn't just talk about short run. I also mentioned long run. I didn't just talk about the stakeholders gaining. I talked about the stakeholders losing. There is balance in my evaluation. A relevant real world example is identified and fully developed to support the argument. I've done this based on an article that I've read. That's why you really need to collect news articles and read them to collect real world examples and build a bank of real world examples. By the way, becoming a member of the channel, there are videos with real world examples that can be adapted to different essays as well. I hope you found this useful. Um, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, leave feedback. I love to hear feedback from people and I, and I make an effort to respond to all comments. All right. Have a good one. Bye.